Good morning, I'm Wendy Petrie and this is your morning news fix for Wednesday the 21st of August. And this update, four years after a law was passed banning smoking and vaping in cars with children, police haven't issued a single fine. Newstalk ZB can reveal police chose not to enforce the law, instead deciding to focus on issuing warnings and referring those in breach to addiction services. But police have now U-turned after queries from Newstalk ZB prompted government intervention. Police Minister Mark Mitchell says police have assured him work is underway to update computer systems to allow officers to issue fines. At the end of the day, police are like any other agency. If the lawmakers make the law, then they're obliged to follow that. I've certainly had assurances from police that they are going to do that. The search continues for six people believed to be trapped in the hull of the super yacht that sank near Sicily. Among them, British tech tycoon Mike Lynch and Morgan Stanley International Chairman Jonathan Bloomer. Christchurch lawyer Ayla Ronald, another New Zealander and 13 others have been confirmed alive. Correspondent Gavin Gray says the one body retrieved from the water has now been formally identified. We now know the identity of the man found dead near that coast. It's a Canadian Antiguan chef who was working on board the boat. New Zealand's driver licensing system has gone under the microscope, with young drivers three times more likely to die on our roads than Australia. AA-backed research highlights overseas licensing laws that could work here, including zero alcohol to- tolerance for restricted and learner drivers, additional testing and doubling the learner licence period. AA road safety spokesperson Dylan Thompson says the government should be looking at these ang- ideas from all angles. He says they need to be examined for their affordability, accessibility and and safety impacts through a New Zealand context. It appears New Zealanders are still preparing for retirement, despite cost of living pressures. Retirement Commission's annual survey reveals 56% of respondents describe their financial position as uncomfortable. But it finds 59% of people are still setting long-term financial goals, with 49% actively saving for retirement. Sorted personal finance lead Tom Hartman says the current cost pressures are having an effect on people's thinking. People being more engaged with their money for the present, but also being more interested in planning for the long term. The Ministry of Health indicated a temporary pause on pelvic mesh operations. It's likely to be in place for at least another year. It'll be paused after four conditions are met. Credentialing of surgeons to carry out mesh operations, a registry of patients meeting to review patients, and a new informed consent process. Informed consent is complete, but other conditions are still being worked on. Charlotte Corti of the Health Consumer Advocacy Alliance says if the suspension is lifted, there needs to be robust credentialing in place and to guarantee people will be safe. To sport now, top-ranked men's tennis player Yannick Sinner has tested positive twice for a banned anabolic steroid in March. He's been stripped of his prize money but is free to keep playing. Springboks coach Razzy Erasmus has welcomed back three players from injury and a further two from suspension in his squad to host the All Blacks in two rugby championship tests. And the Women's T20 World Cup scheduled for October has been moved to the UAE from Bangladesh, which has been rocked by political turmoil and violence in recent weeks. I'm Wendy Petrie. That's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the Newstalk ZB Newsroom.